Greg Zipidelli, Hal Schaefer. Hey, man. What's going on, buddy? Good, Good to, to see, see you. Good to see you. Thanks What's for having going us. On? Every once in a while, we get these guys away from the racetrack, especially Greg over there, and get them out on hunts. And y'all been wide open. Not only y'all been, you know, doing the hunting show, but y'all also been doing a brand new show, you know, the 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 hunt re renovation. The renovation hunters, hunters yeah. Yes, which yeah. is intriguing, man. You told me about that project, and that's that's a pretty cool idea. Yeah, it is. You know, I think both of our goals in when we when we look at what we bring to the outdoors is be able to give back, right? right. And in in this country, preserving our outdoors is a super important task for all of us. You know, we're in the public eye. So being able, these families who have had these hunting camps or fishing camps or vacation homes that have been passed down over the years, and you know, some families may not have the money to keep them up and, and, and sickness happens, whatever happens. Well, in comes renovation hunters. We're gonna renovate it for free. Wow. 100% for yeah. free. We don't only renovate the, the house or the cabin, we actually renovate the property. We do habitat enhancements, food plots, hinge cutting, creek, bedding areas. We try to improve the whole experience for the family and their families for years to come. And that's our goal. That's a heck of a lot more project than to go to a piece of property and just try to get a deer on camera to shoot one. <laughs> that, man, that's a lot of work, man. No it's... wonder y'all both look skinny and lost weight. <laughs> well, you gotta realize every, reno every single renovation show you see is a six month to a year long renovation that the people are paying for, right? Right. Right. This is free, 100% for free. And on top of that, we do it in eight days. Holy cow. Get you some of that, y'all. Just get on in there, son. <laughs> oh, <laughs> man, we, we lay the ears back and let the boar hog eat, buddy. <laughs> we in there throwing elbows and shoulders. and You got the pit stop master on there. That's what it is, son. <laughs> He's back there blowing the whistle. <laughs> Like, what's that in the woods? This is a daily hinge cut and some stuff. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's what that is, man. Absolutely. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing a lot more of that, you man. You need to come join man, us on one I this want year. to, man. We talked about that. I know y'all working with Matabo, and they got some of the most amazing tools out there. So oh, yeah. just, You've used a few yeah, of them. Dude, are you kidding Your me? Your daddy I, loves I, them. I, I, I got to use them there for a little while, and, and my then, dad... <laughs> Hey, now, what well, well, this little tall bowl now? Uh, Papa might need to take that back to his shop. And I go out there and look at that, the you know, the battery operated, like, you know, the... the, the hammer taking, drills. The and hammer drills and taking the darn, uh, Lord, I can't even think. The that. impacts. The impact. To take, you know, change. Man, I can rotate my tractor Tires wheels with that us. sucker, yeah. man. Ask what Stuart Haas Racing uses yeah. when they're really? working on the impacts. Dude, it's unbelievable. And, um, but then I go, you know, I get home and I want to rotate. The other day I was going to rotate my son's tires. We was, I said, yep. come down to the shop and show him. I'm like... Man, where's my impact? It's gone. And I, Dad, Papa, you got look. Yeah, I brought it home. I, I, and I, so anyway, it's all good. That's uh, awesome. But man, y'all tell me a hunting story, man. How was last year's season? Y'all, y'all, y'all get after was... a few things. I know y'all still hunting a little bit. You going oh, to Alabama? Yeah. Roll Tide, baby, going roll to Bama. Roll Tide, baby. Hey, I'm get still at... Roll Tide strong. I don't care about all this stuff. <laughs> We're gonna rise Even to the top. Even though there's a little blue haze over the tide. <laughs> yeah, I don't want. <laughs> nah. You can't hold the tide down. You can't hold them can't down. Can't stop Still the right? That's yeah. exactly right. I don't know. The season wasn't bad, but it wasn't as good as last year. But you know what I mean. You know, you have those. But we we killed some nice deer. We got some good property. I got to spend some time with uh, with my son, which has uh, become one of my uh, my. You know, I just absolutely truly enjoy being able to get yes. him in deer camp and and, and hunt and Zach's you know, a mess. I like you. Th this how year, is, how old is Zach now? Uh, twenty two. Just turned nice. twenty two. He's just getting ready to graduate college and. Um, but uh, we were Virginia, Hal, I, the whole family, his family, my family, were up in a place we have in Virginia for Thanksgiving um, together. And um, we were headed out. To, he was uh, headed out to put me in the stand. And we come across a pretty mature, uh, uh, like crazy, you know, you don't normally just run up on him. And I'm calling him because he was hunting with Zach. And I'm like, get him up there, let him shoot this buck. And I'm like, I'm yeah. going to give my son that, like, I, I've been racing and not, and anyways, that was really cool that he came up and, and, and he was able to put a spot and sock on this this nice mature deer. And what happened nice. was I go back out and I shoot the one I've been hunting for two years. So I'm like, you know, how yeah. things just happen? You know what I mean? It was crazy. I mean, we were there together and he was, you know, in the blind, doing the blind thing. And I, I had already, you know, been hunting all through the Midwest. So uh, Virginia's like the place he gets to go hunt because it's close right. enough. And um, But it's not it's not easy hunting. But Virginia's we, tough. Yeah. Uh, he just said he just killed a deer he'd been hunting. He killed an eight-pointer that looked like a mule deer. 
Big I mean, sucker. oh, yeah. yeah, it was stupid. There's nothing I mean, better than a big stupid, eight pointer, man. Stupid. I love a big so eight. So I'm, I'm way back up because these big hills and valleys right here, right, is what we have one big valley. It gives you a lot of, you'll be able to do some spot and stalk because you got timber at the top of each of them, but you can glass through them and through breaks. So I'm glassing when they're in the blind and all of a sudden I see Muley Freak is the deer <laughs> chasing a doe and there was three other bucks behind it and chased the doe down into a timber. I knew we could get a spot and stalk on. So I'm like, hey, hey, come, we need, on. come on, we gotta get out of the this, stand. You started with, I know this might sound crazy. <laughs> but yeah. get out of the stand now. <laughs> yeah, <come on. laughs> hey, the, um, everything I send him, he starts with, oh, this is gonna be crazy. You're not gonna believe this. <laughs> yeah, right. Every been many, many enough here. years we understand. You, you can almost it. leave that part out now. <laughs> Shorten up the text. Eh? <laughs> so we get over there, and you know when they're in that crazed, you, yeah. you're given a lot of leniency from a deer that you never get. And we were able to make a, a stalk using the terrain and get him in and made an amazing shot on that deer through through a fence and timber and trees about this wide. And Golly, he, put him, he put him where he belonged because he'd been trying to kill that deer for two years. Long time. Yeah. Good deer. Man, yeah. when you when you connect with a deer like that that you've been after, it's a certain we were talking about earlier, it's, it's like you're so happy, but then there comes this little bit of a sadness too. What's it's like, next? Well, yeah, well I gotta close change. the book, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I guess my hunt, um I, I guess my hunt, my favorite one, well, I mean, for the last three years until this year, it seemed like every big deer in the woods walked up to me and stuck his head in, my, in front of my bow or my barrel. <laughs> it was like unbelievable roll. So, so, so I you know had, it, so you had a good year overall. Like it was a no, th no, the three years previous. This yeah. year was I had to work. Yes, I had to work. It was Midwest yes. was hard. Um, I mean, I had multiple times. I had three booners in three days inside of twenty-five yards, and three different booners. And we couldn't shoot one of them. Wow. One, that one, I was laying been... my bow down because the camera guy was having stomach cramps. Yes. So I had to let him go because I'm sitting under it. <laughs> I'm letting him out the tree, somebody brother. Somebody got to go. And I'm letting so... it down, and all of a sudden I hear, yeah. ch -ch -ch -ch. I look over there, and there he is, Church Key Jr. <laughs> oh, I mean, stud deer, yeah. giant 12 pointer. And I'm like, oh. Oh, I, I do this and he looks. He turns away. I'll do that. He looks, and then finally he he turns and he runs, but he runs out into the open. And I said, "Okay, get it up." And he's about seventy yards away, but he's in tall grass, some summer grasses. So I get out the grunt call, and I start hitting him on the grunt call. And oh boy, boom! He kind of bows up. He bows up. Comes walking around through there and comes up to the corner and he's getting ready to walk out in the open. I got the bow up and I'm just about to draw back. And what happens? A doe chased by a spike comes running across the grass and he turns and see you later. The real thing, one out every time. He went from fighting to loving. And then, <laughs> yeah, and then I, at that point, I knew the cameraman situation. So I had to throw him out of the tree stand before business got bad. <laughs> <laughs> Everything went crazy all at once, man. Yeah. Oh, um, that couldn't make it bad. But that is my most memorable hunt that didn't happen because last year I saw this deer multiple times and let him walk. Right. And then another one was a deer that had been missing. He was a three-year-old that was a 170 deer at a three-year-old. Super big, wide. His name's Clyde. Yeah. He disappeared as another deer we let walk uh, when he was young. We didn't see him at all when he was four. And lo and behold, he comes running a doe right in and stops right behind a tree at 20 yards. And what does a doe do? Instead of coming on the way she was coming, she turned around and walked the other way. Golly, so, it's, it's just like they know. Ooh, it's a, it was, yeah. it was one of those years. But uh, scored in Kansas, did good, you know, scored in Virginia. I mean, and um, we had, I mean, end up with a, de a pretty decent year and got to do a, you know, a lot of management stuff too. You know, yeah. when season goes bad, you go to that management mode That's and start right. managing some of your properties. But you know, a great thing is we're we're pretty excited looking in next year because we're actually managing almost 70,000 acres wow. across the Midwest and the East Coast. So we got That's some... work. That's work. Yeah. That really is. That, that's a lot of work, man. Yep. Well, I can tell you, y'all ain't the only ones that had that kind of season. Man, you wouldn't believe the conversation we've been having. I too had a really tough year. And it was weird because everything felt right. You know, we'd have weather, 
but it's like could not catch a break. And you know, you, I know like like last year, I see you post a big deer, and I'm like, oh, dang it, oh, dang I know. it. <laughs> and then I would I would kill on and say, oh, okay, good, I'm good. Here, yeah. <laughs> I was sending you pics. And this year, this year was not that way. It's like we we did have some success as y'all did. But, you know, it seems like there's always those times where I, I call it like you don't necessarily deserve it. I mean, you got hunts that you really work hard or you're trying. And then sometimes you might go and like, maybe I go hunt with y'all. It's like, hey, man, go down there, take a left. <laughs> you'll see a lock on. Like, all right, you know, what we're looking at. Hey, there's a couple nice deer in there. And all of a sudden you're like, oh, there's a big buck. You know, and so you don't, you almost feel not deserving, but you feel lucky. This year, man, we hunted hard and got out there. A lot of sweat and we put a lot of nice deer on the ground, but overall, it was off, but I've been hearing that across the board yeah. in a lot of the hunting shows and a lot of people that's been out there. And we're blessed to hunt a lot. We all are. So, yeah, you uh, got that right. So, but man, I could sit and talk with y'all all day, man. We're about to run out of time, but it's always good to Appreciate see y'all. You. Come you join us at a race sometime. I'm going to do that, man. I'd love that. I took my seven year old to his first NASCAR race last year. Um, Clint Borger, who hunt with some, who, who knows you well, he he said, man, you got to come. Your son ever been? And I like, man. And Waylon, I thought he'd get bored. He sat there as Atlanta Motor Speedway, and he sat there and watched every lap. I figured, you know, yeah, yeah, you know, I don't know, 20, 30 minutes, yeah. he'd be like, okay, we get some peanuts. But he just like, he loved it, loved it. So yeah, well, I'd love to get to NASCAR race. Well, buddy, thank you. Appreciate everything you're doing for same, the outdoors, same man. Same you, Hal. Thank appreciate you. Appreciate it, buddy.